Welcome adventurers to the next video in the class comparison video series, where we take a look at two kind of similar classes and see how they stack up against each other. Today, we are going to look at two of the newer classes, the kineticist and the psychic. And both of these could be considered blaster casters. When the psychic came around, a lot of people said, hey, Pathfinder second edition finally has a true blaster caster. And then the kineticist said, hey, psychic, hold my beer. Though technically the kineticist doesn't actually cast spells, they do have spell-like abilities called impulses. So I think it still counts as a blaster caster, at least for this video's purpose. So let's take a look at what makes both of these really good classes at applying ranged or sometimes up close damage all day long. Because yes, both of these classes really do excel at consistently dealing damage, typically from range, without weapons and without relying on big spells or other limited resources. Instead, they have powerful, consistent abilities that don't have many limitations. Let's start with the Psychic because it is a little bit easier to understand, especially if you are somewhat familiar with the system already. They are a spellcaster but they are a spellcaster who actually specializes in cantrips and not in big spells. Remember, cantrips can be cast all day long without really any limitation, so it is a big advantage to specialize in that and not be tied to the limitations of your spell slots. A psychic chooses only two cantrips, but three are granted to them by one of their subclass options. They have kind of a dual subclass. Uh, the cantrips are granted by their conscious mind. And these three aren't just regular cantrips, they're actually psi cantrips, which are slightly more powerful than regular cantrips. For example, the distant grasp conscious mind can use telekinetic projectile at 60 feet rather than at the standard 30. Additionally, the Psychic can choose to use one of their two focus points. Yes, they have two, and every time they refocus, they regain two, which is really nice. They can use those focus points to amp their cantrips, making them even more powerful. Uh, to use that same example of the distant grasp and telekinetic projectile, well, when amped, uh, you can actually push targets in addition to dealing damage, and that is on top of the extended range that you just already have. So yeah, you can really unleash some very, very weighty, powerful, impactful cantrips as a psychic. And wait, there's even more when talking about what the psychic can do. That's because a psychic can unleash their psyche and apply extra damage to their uh, spell attacks or actually any spell that does damage. Um, the only requirement is that uh, you have cast a spell in the previous round and that you use a free action to unleash your psyche. Uh, when you do so, when you cast a damaging spell, you gain a status bonus to its damage equal to double the spell's level. So two additional points at level one, for example. So yeah, that's extra damage on top of a extra ability on top of extra range or some other extra ability on your cantrips. Meanwhile, the kineticist isn't technically a spellcaster, uh, so they are kind of unique to the system. They channel elements into an attack called Elemental Blast. Uh, these are like cantrips. Uh, there's no limitation on how many times you can use them in a day, though your kinetic gate does have to be open, which just takes one action to do. Uh, the damage die is determined by your element, though it's typically a d6 or d8, or I think always a d6 or d8. And uh, Elemental Blast comes in four versions. There is a ranged and melee and one and two action version and every combination thereof. When you are in melee range, you add your strength to its damage. When you uh, use two actions, you add your constitution to its damage. And if you're melee and two actions, well, you are going to add your strength and constitution to that damage. So you could be dealing just a very easy solid D8 plus four from range, or maybe even like a D8 plus four plus three in a melee situation with that kineticist. 
So each of the classes has ranged and sometimes melee, magic, or magic-like attacks that hit harder than all of the cantrips that other casters will be using, and they can use them all day long. That's not to say that the Psychic and the Kineticist don't occasionally have a very big blast of extra damage. Um, the Psychic does have limited spell selection, and the Kineticist has some class feats, which are kind of spells sometimes. The Psychic is a spontaneous spellcaster using the Occult spell list, though they have very limited spell slots. At level one, they have one. Level two, two. Level three, you guessed it, three. You compare that to a sorcerer, for example, who at level three will have seven spells, if I counted correctly. I mean, it's not really much of a comparison, but it does mean that in between those all-day cantrips that you are using as a psychic, you can occasionally bust out a big spell. Meanwhile, the kineticist picks up these extra big abilities through class feats that are tied to their element. Um, the kineticist class feats are often sort of a two-action area of effect or otherwise like extra damage or type of activity that you can do. For example, Hail of Splinters is a 30-foot cone of, well, splinters of damage. Uh, Blazing Wave is also a 30-foot cone. And then Tumbling Lumber actually rolls elemental logs in a 30-foot line, which is 10 feet wide. So really good, big area of effect options are available to you for those more infrequent big blasts as a kineticist. It should be noted, though, that some of these actions for the kineticist carry the overflow trait. Once a kineticist uses an action with the overflow trait, their kinetic gate shuts down. They then must spend an action to reactivate it and in order to reaccess their kinetic uh, abilities. So there's a lot more going on with kineticists that we're not going to get into now. If you want to check out more, check out my kineticist deep dive video. And on to the next topic. You know, it's not actually all about damage with these two classes. Both the Kineticist and the Psychic also offer pretty fantastic support options. And I would say the Kineticist especially. Starting with the Psychic, once a Psychic unleashes their Psyche, they have access to other abilities through their subconscious mind, which is their other subclass option that can be mixed and matched with the conscious mind. Uh, they can restore the mind, which is a one uh, action ranged heal. They can recall the teachings, which basically means they've automatically uh, prepared to aid any of their surrounding allies. Um, and then back to cantrips for a second, the psychic actually can cast some helpful cantrips on their allies, uh, like casting shield on an ally, the cantrip, and not just on themselves. And then with the kineticist, well, there's a lot to go over. You'll probably want to check out the deep dive video again uh, in order to fully understand everything, but let's take a look at some of the kineticist feats. Kineticists can pick up class feats that are tied to their elements, and a lot of these offer really cool support options. For example, Four Winds uh, is a feat which propels allies, uh, up to four allies, so that they can move even when it's not their turn. Uh, you can get Fresh Produce, which is a healing uh, ability. Heals an ally, D4 plus one. And then there's something like, you know, Stepping Stones, which creates a path over difficult terrain. So there's a lot of healing, movement, uh, debuffing. You can create terrain. You can uh, bypass terrain. All of those types of things are available to you as a kineticist. And then starting at level five as a kineticist, you gain access or you can gain access to your gate junctions. These are special abilities that can be applied to your elemental blast attack, so even more for the blaster castering, but it can also grant you abilities that take place within your kinetic aura, which is an area around you that is swirling with your uh, elemental energy. Um, you can do things like create difficult terrain around you as an earth elementalist, or uh, create temporary hit points uh, for allies in your area, if you are a wood kineticist, or even debuff uh, the enemy's attacks and armor class if they're 
using metal um, weapons or armor as the metal kineticist. So lots of really cool things that just happen around you that are buffing, debuffing as a kineticist. So I think if you are playing for support, kineticist might be a little bit better of an option than the psychic, though I have a support mostly psychic in my campaign and that character does a fantastic job. Well, let's talk a bit about extras. So what else is there other than support and uh, damage? Well, you do have some exploration as well, right, in the game. One interesting thing about the Psychic is that they are either an intelligence or charisma-based class. So if you are an intelligence-based character, you might have a lot of skill training or crafting or arcana or something like that and be more of the studious type in your downtime and exploration but you could also be that charisma-based psychic and you could be the face of the party. So there are a lot of different options to explore there as a psychic. And then as far as exploration goes, well, all kineticists have a very cool uh, base impulse called base kinesis. It's kind of like press to digitation, but only for your element. So you can do things like start a little fire or put a fire out or create some water in a cup, that kind of a thing. And on the note of exploration, that leads us pretty naturally into role play. The psychic we're going to start with comes from the Dark Archive book. And I really enjoy a lot of the flavor and the artwork in that book. It's sort of all about rediscovering ancient lost uh, magical mysteries. And well, that flavor is imbued in a lot of the psychic abilities and the, the flavor text and all of, you know, everything about the class is sort of like dark shrouded in mystery. Meanwhile, the kineticist has a pretty awesome connection to their element and each element has a really unique flavor. Air is kind of about movement, wood and earth tend to be about protection, water tends to be about healing, fire is very aggressive, metal is sort of caustic and also pretty aggressive. So either way, you shouldn't have a hard time creating a backstory if you are playing as either one of these classes. Um, they both are pretty unique in the system too, in the sense that like you're kind of not really a spellcaster like the others, and you're not a marshal. So lots of room for you to explore your character. And there we have it, adventures, the two blaster casters of Pathfinder 2nd Edition, the Kineticist and the Psychic. I like both classes a lot. I like their unique mechanics, unique uh, flavor to them. And I really like that there are magic or magic-like classes that aren't so tied to the limited resources that, well, all of the other casters are. I do think that both are somewhat maybe a bit too advanced for new players, but I will say that once you get the hang of the Psy cantrips and elemental blasts, um, you get to use them more often, right? That was sort of the point of this video. And you're not relying on spells and, you know, all of the complicated text that goes along with spells, especially if you are preparing a, a whole bunch of different ones. So you might actually find that after that initial learning curve, you really settle into a groove and these aren't that difficult to play. Well, since the Kineticist is so new, have any of you out there had a chance to play as one yet? And even better, have you also been able to play as a psychic so you could compare the two? Either way, let us know about it in the comments. And until then, remember to brush up on your elemental-based puns before playing as a Kineticist. You know, just kind of a nice would you please move before blasting everybody with a tumbling log or a hail of splinters your party will really appreciate it.